Um, today's topic is um, setting up a WordPress website for um, a peace of mind. So technically, um, we are going to be showing you how to set up a WordPress website as a non-profit. So um, let's get right in. Already, you've just we've already presented to you who we are. Um, so I'm going to just move ahead. All right. So um, there are certain things we're going to tackle in this presentation. Um, we're going to talk about how to get a domain name, um, then hosting, installing WordPress on your web hosting, choosing a template or a theme for your website, um, adding content to your website. Um, then we'll talk a bit more about um, adding plugins to your website. Um, you don't have to worry about the terminologies now. We're going to explain most of them or all of them in the course of presentation. And also, this is going to be a hands on presentation. So we're going to um, actually talk about how it's, uh, it's actually done. So let's get right in. So the first thing we're talking about is getting a domain name. So um, a domain name is basically the address your website on the internet. So um, take it like, um, let's say you want to start a, a nonprofit and then you come up with a name for your organization. Um, you come up with a vision. Um, you need to, um, so the name of your organization becomes your domain name. So yeah, so the name for your um, organization, let's say, um, let's say my organization is STEM Rising Foundation. So that, be, that becomes my domain name. So um, mostly you, you see URLs that take you to certain websites, um, like what we have on the screen, which is um, HTTPS with a hyphenated, the backslash is um, www.techsoup.org. So TechSoup is the name, um, the name of the organization. And then we have the .org, which is a top level domain, which is called the extension. So every URL has um, a subdomain. So the subdomain, which is the www. Um, that's the World Wide Web. And then HTTP um, protocol. So the hypothesis protocol, you, you might notice that some websites don't have the X at the end of the HTTP. So it's it just HTTP without the X. So um, those websites do not have um, an access certificate installed on them. So that means um, when visiting those websites, some browsers will tell you that the website you're trying to visit is not secured. So, your website should have an HTTPS attached to it, and also, um, so you take your so your, your domain name is just like um, the address or the address to your um, your website. All right. So another thing to consider next is choosing a good domain name. So in selecting a domain name for your nonprofit. Um, it has to be simple, that, that's the simplicity. It shouldn't be something um, very long, maybe let's say your organization's name is STEM Rising African Foundation with something, but you don't want to use that long name. You want to make it very simple and short. So you make sure your domain name is simple and short. You don't have to make it so long and becomes very difficult for people to guess. The next thing you need to consider is the uniqueness. Um, your domain name needs to be very unique. It needs to be distinct to your organization. It needs to be um, directed towards what your nonprofit is doing. It's, it's um, suitability. So your domain name needs to be very suitable. Um, it needs to match your niche. So let's say um, you are into a nonprofit, but your domain name is um, um, desirebakery.com. Dot com. Bakery has nothing to do with, so that's a business domain. That, that that's a business name. So your domain name needs to be um suitable. It needs to match your niche. It needs to match what you intend to do, so, so that it becomes easy for people to remember that name and visit your website. So someone visiting your website is like someone coming to. You. So once the person knows the address your office, the person can come to your office. And then the next thing is you need to use the right top level domain. That's the right extension. Um, Nonprofits use 
.org extension, that's the .org. Companies um, are more keen to .com. So you see most companies have domain names with .com. So that's uh, maybe my company, for instance, I would say it's betterstand.com. So it's a company. So companies are inclined to using .com. Organizations like TechSoup uses TechSoup.org. And, uh, and TechSoup also has another domain, which is TechSoup.global. So the extension is to match what your organization is doing. Um, yeah, so you need to choose the right top level domain. You need to choose the right um, domain extension. You, you, don't, um, you don't start a nonprofit and you get a domain and you choose .io. .io is inclined to mobile applications um, or software companies. Yeah, so you need to get the right top level domain. So these are the things that you need to consider um, when you're choosing a domain name for your organization or when choosing a name for... And also, also it's, it's not always that... that um, it's important well, to know that it's not always that you use the full name, name of your organization um, you can just maybe abbreviate, just make it simple and short. Your domain name needs to be very simple. It shouldn't be too long and difficult for people to guess. All right, so then how do you buy a domain name? So now you've considered, decided that, okay, I want to go with this particular name. How do I go ahead into buying that particular name? Uh, a lot of hands-on on how to go about this. Um, so there are thousands of domain registries. So just like how you have um, in some um, countries, we have when you want to register a business, you go to the registrar of businesses or the registrar general's department to register your business. The same way when you need to register your business, your domain name, it's controlled by certain people who fight to register those names. So you go to the domain registrar so you have to choose a domain registrar there are um, a lot of domain registries out there so a domain registrar is simply a company that manages the reservation of internet domain names so you need to choose the right um registrar so there are a host of um registrars out there based on pricing um, um customer support and so many so we have names like one on one um one in one, Domain King, GoDaddy, Name.com, Namecheap, um, Bluehost, domains. Um, but I'm keen to using um, Namecheap because um, of the uh, and also um, pricing scheme of their domains. So um, I'm keen to using Namecheap. Someone might be keen to using Go um, GoDaddy or choosing Bluehost as their domain registrar. So in buying a domain, you need to go to a domain registrar's website to buy your domain name. Okay, so. So the next thing after, after um, getting a domain name already. So um, first of all, um, I want us to go through the whole presentation then We'll do the hands on on everything that we've, we are doing. So, the best thing is to get a web hosting. Just like yes. you need to get an office so that people can go to visit you. So, um, a web hosting is a place where the files or the content of your website will be located. So, um, you need to get a web hosting, just like how after registering a business, you need to get a location for your business and get an office space, um, get equipment, get uh, maybe office furniture um, and everything for your office so that people can be able to visit that office. Mind you, we said your domain name is the address. So when someone is looking for your domain name, where do they come to? So when they go to the URL and type techsoup.org, where does it take them to? So it takes them to a destination. That's a computer somewhere um, or a server somewhere that is hosting your web files. So you need to um, buy a host web hosting. So um, the same way there's um, web hosting companies. So there are companies that provide web hosting services for business, companies that provide web hosting services for organizations. So um, 
based on, and they all have different um, pricing and different packages. So someone can decide to go for a shared hosting. So a shared hosting is basically like um, having a laptop um, and then maybe you are at home with your family and then you have a laptop and every user has an, a login. So you're actually sharing that particular, that single computer. So that's a shared hosting. So, or let's take it the, um, having a shared working space. So instead of going to invest more money in from ground up, you choose to go into a co-working space. And the advantage of that is that it is um, cost incentive. That, that means it's, it's um, you have a limited budget for your organization and then you don't have to spend too much money in getting your private hosting. So a private hosting could be like a virtual private hosting, which is a VPS. Um, so instead of you going for a VPS, which is more expensive, and then you can go for a shared hosting, which is cheaper. So in building WordPress websites, um, there are several web hosting companies that uh, Nichip can, um, can offer us that um, hosting for web, WordPress websites. Um, Amazon provides that. Um, Cloudways provide that. Um, GoDaddy also provide that. But um, you need to also consider the. You need, you need to consider the. Um, the recognized ones. So most of the recognized ones basically are Bluehost, um, which is WordPress recognized, and the Namecheap. So for me, I still go with Namecheap. Sometimes I use Bluehost. Sometimes it depends on who you are working for. That you, that you prefer is it their customer support that you prefer so you need to consider in buying your hosting for your website all right and so the next need, um, just a second Desiree, because i want to add a couple of things here okay um it's uh sometimes it's important to let's say keep the whole thing uh, into the say under the same umbrella so as you've seen on uh, the previous slides uh Quite a lot, of, a lot of the web hosting companies also offer domain name services. So it helps to buy the domain name from the company that ideally you will plan to host your website on. And also in terms of website hosting, there are, let's say, three major uh, categories of uh, hosting providers. So there are the shared uh, hosting providers that Desire mentioned. Uh, then you have also managed WordPress service providers like for example, WP Engine or other WordPress focused um, uh, hosting providers that also take care of your actual uh, server infrastructure for you. And then the VPS providers that uh, also Zira mentioned, which are, let's say, uh, can be cloud providers or other type of uh, providers, uh, if you have the skills to uh, allow you to manage your own uh, web infrastructure. So there are different types of providers depending on the type of let's say, skills that you have in-house in your organization or the type of, let's say, management services that you are looking for. All right. Thank you very much, Daniel. Um, so the next thing is to talk about, okay, so now you've gotten your um, business name, your business is registered with a registrar, um, a domain registrar, you have your hosting purchase, so that was the next thing. The next thing is the next thing is begin to uh, begin the process of setting up your business. That's in the business sense or in, in the website sense. The next step is setting up your WordPress installation for your server. So buying a hosting is just like buying um, a computer, and it depends on the type of computer you, have, you bought. Are you sharing with someone which is a shared hosting or? Um, it's a private a private hosting, which it's for yourself that you have to manage on your own. So um, depending on what you have, you would have to install WordPress on it. You'd have to set it up. So the first thing is to install WordPress, which um, most um, web hosting companies provide a cPanel. So um, a cPanel is basically um, an interface that allows you to um, access certain 
things on your hosting easily. So just like um having um Windows on it, or having a um, um, MacBook and having a um, Mac OS on it, or having a laptop and installing a laptop. Windows OS or the Windows OS or the Mac OS have it on your device becomes um like your or the interface. Have certain applications or inside your Windows application, you have Chrome, you have Firefox, you have um. You have so many applications installed. So one of those applications that counts by default. Software Clause. Um, um, so Software Clause is, um, is a, an extremely popular auto-installer app that allows a lot of content management system applications like WordPress, um, Joomla, Drupal, and a host of others. Um, so you don't have to um, have um, a technical skills, maybe coding skills. Or know any programming language you want to install. install. You don't have to know HTML. You don't have to know CSS. You don't have to know JavaScript. You don't have to know PHP to be able to set up your web, um, set up um, your website. So with just a click of a button, you can install WordPress on your server, and then you are good to go. So we. Domain hands on, um, buying a hosting hands on, and all that. Okay, so after you've installed your um, your WordPress using the software clause app, I'll be demonstrating um, in shortly, um, you'd have to choose a WordPress theme or template. So the WordPress theme or template is the um, design and feel of your website. So maybe you want your website to look like maybe you've seen an, a, a particular website that you want your website to look like. So you would have to choose a template that, that matches that particular website so that you can look at that and set it up. Or you have um, a UX or UI designer create um, a mock-up for you that you want to create. So you have to look for a, a template that matches that mock-up. So after you set up WordPress on it, you then go and install a WordPress template. Okay, so in choose, so the next thing is how do you choose a WordPress template for your website? Um, so we have very um, free WordPress templates on the WordPress.org website, and then we have premium templates. Or it is a place where you can go and buy thousands of WordPress templates. So you have so many WordPress templates are different from different price range and different um, domain for different domains or, or different purposes. So you go to Team Forest to be able to get access to premium templates, or you can just use a free template from the WordPress, which is um, which we call um, premium. So um, I think what I have there is in choosing a WordPress theme. You can either opt for a premium theme or a free template. If you choose a free theme, make sure it's up to date and it has good rating. Yeah, that's very important. Um, when I'm using a free, what people are seeing about that template is that template secure? Does it have bugs in it? I think in our previous presentation, um, Daniel actually um, was on that presentation where it, it spoke about um, securing your website, WordPress website. So you need to consider the security of your website because one, you might you need to know that you are handling um, data. So maybe your, your organization is handling data. People are going to be submitting um, applications to your website. People are going to be buying to your website. People are going to be doing donations to your website. People are going to be subscribing to newsletters to your website. So you are, you're going to be accepting personal data. So you need to ensure that your website is secure. Um, your the template has good rating. What are people saying about that particular template? So it's best to go for a premium template where you are guaranteed that okay this template this number of people are using it i can also use it and then it has frequent updates okay so um so um you have here some save and popular templates that you can use um top free templates so as i said on the on the wordpress.org website so when you go to the wordpress
you can have the same because, because of because of their popularity and they are highly customizable feature so um once you buy the template you need to customize it to match to as a generic design so you need to know Content in the, I think that's what we're talking about. Okay, so it's about adding content to your website. So first thing, you've got in your domain, you've got in your web hosting, um, you've installed WordPress on your, temp on your website using software clause, and then you've gotten a template, whether free or premium, then, and you've installed a template on your website. So the template usually comes with demo content. Some templates comes with demo content, that matches the design that you saw that made you like that template. Then next thing is to add content. And there are two favorite ways of adding content to WordPress website. We have posts and then pages. Okay. So, in two basic um, formats, I would say, which are the pages and then posts. So um, pages are putting it generic, like you have an office space, um, pages would be like maybe um, you have the reception, you have the um, the CEO office, you have the staff working room, you have the washroom. So those are like pages. So um, every website needs to have a home page. Every website, a home page is where you display information where people come to see first when they come to your website. So maybe at your home page, you need to have the vision, the mission. And then the values of your organization, and then maybe some projects you're working on, and certain testimonials you want, might want to put on your website. And every website needs to have an about page. So an about page is um, where people get to know what your organization is about. So you need to tell the people about your organization. So an about page technically is like an office or a location in your office that tells people what you do or what you are about, what uh, what is driving your organization. So that is where your about page goes. And then we have the contact S page. Um, the contact S page is where people get information on how to reach, get back to you. Numbers, you have emails that you can reach you. So when it comes to websites, you get those information on your contact page. So basically, a website, you have a home page, an about page, um, a contact S page, technically. And then another important um, thing or page is the privacy policy page. Most people ignore that a lot. There's um, a whole of WordPress website that do not have privacy um, pages. And WordPress make it easier to create privacy pages. You just have to edit an already existing template and it's so easy to set up. But it's very vital because you are handling personal data. How are you going to the data you are How are you going to ensure that the personal information of people you are collecting is secure. So you would have to set up your pages, which is the home page, telling people about um, your organization, your vision, your mission, and your values. Some testimonials, you need to have um, an about page telling people about what your organization does or what you are about. Maybe what made you start the nonprofit? What made, what, what was the drive behind? What's your story? So over there, you put that um, about contain there because when um, volunteers or um, sponsors or um, donors come to your website, the very first page they would like to go to is your about. They want to know what this organization is doing. What was your story? What would I want to? I just saw their domain online and I just heard about them and I've come to their website. So they go to your about page too. So you need to have a very catching story on your about page. And then the WordPress website mostly have posts. So that's another way of creating content. Um, posts are like creating news. So maybe um, you're, you do a fundraising, you need to tell that story on your website. You organize an event um, or a campaign, you need to tell that story on your website. So you use your post pages to create blocks for your website. So yeah. The next thing um, is adding plugins to your website. So now, um, let's say you set up your website um, with your home page, your about page, your contact us page, your privacy policy page. For the basics, 
the next thing is to add plugins. So what are plugins? Plugins are like um, apps that enhances the functionality of your website. So they add more features to your website or they enable you to secure your website. So there are a host of plugins that help you secure your WordPress website. Um, so, so installing plugin for your website. So in installing a plugin, there are thousands, thousands and thousands of WordPress plugins. Um, developers are creating plugins every day, updating plugins every day. So in getting a plugin for your website, you need to first of all ensure that the plugin is up to date. Has it been updated recently? Because WordPress release updates frequently. Has a plugin you are using also up to date with the current version of the WordPress you are using? Another thing is, is it widely used? How many active installations has that template, the, that plugin has? And has it been tested with your WordPress version? As I said, um, you need to ensure that as when WordPress release a new update and you update your, those plugins need to also need to be updated. In showing or using that, that template, that plugin on your website again, because there is likelihood that um, that website, that plugin can bring in vulnerabilities to your website or can make your website unsecure because um, it's not up to date. Okay, so, and also WordPress has a community. So before you go in for a particular template, ensure that the community is going with it. I, I'm, I'm so many people talking about it. I'm actually using it. Um, one very common um, template um, plugin is Elementor. Um, so, okay, so um, I, I think I'll jump into that. Let me just go sequentially. Um, so what are the core plugins for your website? Every website needs a security plugin. Every website needs a security plugin. You first of all need to secure. So you notice that we have um, four um, plugins instead. We have the web frame security that's for firewall and malware scan. So it put, it protects you from people from um, unauthorized users from accessing your website, or it prevents hackers from brute forcing into your website, or it prevents brute force attacks. So people cannot when people get try to log into your website you are notified so these are plugins that these are this way we have the web frame security we have the jetpack we have the um security malware scan by so these are from different different um organized companies or developers and then we have the side um security and you notice that the um and then for instance, the web frame security has um three thousand seven fifty um, ratings. So you know that, okay, if I want to go for a plugin, if I want to choose a plugin from a website, this is, this is the best one. Well, this is good. Jetpack is widely um, rating. So that means it's good. I can go in for that. So yeah, so those things are going to ensure that you install a security plugin. Uh, the next thing is um, if once you've installed your security plugin, you need to set up backing up your website. People think but it depends on the approach you need to handle your website. So you need to ensure that you um, update your website frequently or and back it up. So, so you either back up your website online or offline so that in case something happens, you can restore it from a backup. Okay, the next step is okay, my website is secure, my website is frequently backed up. How do I ensure visibility? How do people get to know that my website is actually exists or I have a new website in my organization? How do I tell my community? How do I tell my volunteers? How do I tell my sponsors? How do I tell my donors that I have a new website? Um, which we call, which, um, which are search engine optimization plugin. So search engine optimization plugins are plugins that ensure your website is very visible in searches. So when someone searches for um, non-profit helping deprived people in Africa, your non-profit should show up because that is what you're doing. So you need to, um, so we have several um, good um, plugins. The best one is the Yoast SEO which has um, um, 
that's five star rating. So it's obvious that that is awesome. Yeah. So WordPress plugins are like apps for your website that enables you to extend the features of your website and add some customization. Okay. So say so, and then once you have um, that done, and then your website is visible. Now people are now seeing your website online. They need to have a way to contact you because your website is now showing up everywhere. It's showing up on um, Facebook. It's showing up on Google search. It's showing up on several different um, places. So how do you ensure that um, you get feedback? That you need to use certain forms. So we have the BP form, contact form seven. So these are the plugins that allows you to receive feedbacks for, to your website. So you can add a contact form on your website that allows you to um, get contact information of who wants to reach out to you. You can add um, a subscription button where people can both subscribe to newsletters. So um, plugins actually helps you to ensure that people are able to give you feedback once you enhance your search engine optimization once you enhance the visibility of your website. Okay. So um, now we're going to wrap this up and then we're going to jump into um, the process of setting up a website hands on. Um, before I jump into that, if anyone has any question based on the presentation, you can ask before we jump into the Um, if there are any questions, you can just um, bring it up before I jump into the answer presentation. Uh, am I still being heard? Yes, we're hearing you. Yes, you're fine, Desiree. All right. And I think I'm a bit too fast. I talk very fast, so I'm a bit too fast. There's a I, I can question go. in the chat <laughs> about how many plugins versus or are slowing down the site. Well, this highly depends on a lot of things. Most importantly, your web hosting package. Uh, but you can have almost any number of plugins. Uh, it also depends how they work uh, with each other, if, if there are incompatibilities or things like that. Uh, for example, I've run websites uh, with anywhere in between 10 and even 65, 70 plugins. But uh, of course, the ones with a lot of plugins are very complex sites. With big data bases. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't okay, I'm actually now going through the um, okay, so I think that's the only questions we have in the chat box, I guess. Um, does anyone on the panel have experience integrating a WordPress site in Azure for hosting or alternative Google Workspace? Um, okay. I have a bit of experience with Azure. I usually use uh, Amazon Web Services because uh, through the TechSoup program, nonprofits get uh, 1,000 credits every year for this. Um, so I run a infrastructure with multiple Amazon Web Services accounts for different nonprofits that I work with. Uh, but it can be done in Azure as well. It's uh, pretty similar, let's say, as an approach. You can create an app service in Azure and uh, deploy the WordPress application in that app service. Okay, Cindy says, if you suspect a plugin is slowing down your, website, your site, um, you can tr you can try this. Deactivate the plugin, don't install it, then activate them one at one at a time. So yeah. So what she's saying, technically, is um, if you notice that maybe yeah, that's what the website. I think um, we. Um, when something goes wrong on my website, it was that plugin that is maybe like an update or something. So you deactivate all the plugins. Um, 
reactivate them one after the other to see what is causing the problem. That's what when you want to get back to your website. Um, so um, I think I can now just step into the practical aspects. Um, it, unless um, Danny wants to ask something else. No, it's all good for now. All right. So, so I'm going to sh um, share a different screen. Okay. So um, I'm technically going to be working, as Daniel said, it's, be it's best to have a single company for both your um, domain as your domain registrar and also hosting. So if you're going with Bluehost, you, it's best to have your hosting and then um, your domain with them because you make it easier when you want to renew as well, yeah. So um, I think for the purpose of this presentation, um, I'll be going in with um, Namecheap. Um, when it comes to WordPress website, um, they say Bluehost is the best, but I don't really use Bluehost. It's okay, it's WordPress certified sort of, but I don't really use Bluehost. I use um, um, Namecheap because of the uh, customer service. It's not because of anything, just because of the customer service. They're they very responsive and all that, yeah. So in case something goes wrong, they're able to assist you and all that. So I'm gonna jump in and share a different screen right now. Um, so, okay, so I share screen again. Okay, so um, the first thing we said was that you need to get a domain name. So you need to register a domain name. We spoke about finding the best domain and how to choose your domain. You need to, be, you need to consider simplicity. So the first thing you need to do is called going in for a domain hunt. Yeah, sort of that. So, okay, you have a business name. You need to first check whether it's your business name available. And then um, mostly um, you can have an organization and then... Um, you want to notice that someone has already taken your domain or your domain is being used by someone else, but you have legally register your business or your non-profit in your country, but someone has that domain. So the best thing is you also need to, uh, if you are starting a new non-profit, you need to consider is the domain name available before you choose that name as well. It's for organizations. Dot org extension. So let's say um, I'm going to go in for um, an organization like um, TechSoup. Okay, TechSoup. Okay, let me just start with TechSoup. Um, dot org. So let's say I'm starting a business, a non profit, and the name is TechSoup.org. So I'm making it, I'm doing a domain search for that domain name. So it goes in and search for that particular domain name to see whether it's available and also gives you alternative domains like maybe um, techsoup.com and other extension. So it, it's basically going to tell me that I know the result of this. It's going to tell me that they by someone else because TechSoup owns this domain. So, wow, this domain was registered in 1999. Yeah, so this domain was registered in 1999. Um, so it's like this way it has been registered and all that. So that means it's not actually available for you to buy. So you might have to choose a different name. So let's see. Um, let's add TechSoup Connects um, and let's search again. So you notice that the TechSoup.connect is available. So you just technically add it to your card. So adding a domain to your card, you can just um, check out. Um, TechSoup, um, sorry, Namecheap offers a lot of discounts. So this domain is actually going in for $8.68, but you can actually get it for 33% off. So Namecheap runs those this 
this kind of first promo very often. Um, so you'll be getting a domain for at least just five dollars. So I'm gonna view my card and then check out. So once then you check out and information, um, and then um, there you have it. You so another thing which is that the privacy and access protection for securing your privacy information. So um, when someone does um, that's a quick search on a particular domain, the person is able to find out who owns that domain. So what Namecheap does is they hide that information from the public. So it wouldn't get to know your contact information. You wouldn't get to know your phone number, your email, and then your name when they search for domain names and who owns them. So Namecheap hides that information and you don't pay anything for it. I think um, some other hosting companies provide it and some other comp companies will provide it for at a fee. So but Namecheap's privacy is free. I confirm the order and then I check out. Um, if you are creating a new account, you'd have to um, sign up. If you have already have a name to account, you'd have to log in. Um, to make this presentation easy, I'm going to um, log into my account. So, okay, now after you've gotten, you, let's assume I've bought my domain. Um, let me do that of the hosting as well. So, several different hosting. So, we have um, the shared hosting. They actually have a WordPress hosting, like what Bluehost, um, Bluehost provides. So, you can actually go in for the web, WordPress hosting. Or if you want to use your hosting for other things, a side website, um, a side WordPress, then it's best you go for the shared hosting. So if you just want to host only your, your website on it, you can just go in for the WordPress hosting that pre-installs WordPress for you and all that. But maybe you, you want to do other things on your website, on your domain, maybe you want to host another website that is not WordPress on your website, then you can go in for the shared hosting. So we're going to try the shared hosting option. Then, once you come there, you get to choose a plan. So we have um, the shared hosting, we have free packages, which are the seller plans. Depending on what you, um, the, the space you have, this one gives you, um, a, a allows you to install, set up three websites on your, on your, so it's like having um, an office and sharing it with So the gigawatt, um, the size of the office um, um, and free content delivery network. So uh, in that a content delivery network is um, seven different locations. When someone is asking website from um, um, New York, your um, um, a single location, it's segment the closest location to the person. That means it helps your website. It's, it's, it's best request your website faster. So maybe I choose um, um, this package, I register, I sign up, and then I have the hosting set up. So you'd have to connect it into, you have to connect a host, the, the domain to, the hosting to a domain. So every domain, every hosting is attached to a domain. So it, it, it has automatically attached to the, um, the domain I added to my cart. I might decide to change that if that's not the domain I, I want, then I check out and I buy it. So once you have those two done, you now have your hosting and your domain. So um, now let's to continue with the next phase. I'll have to log into my account. Okay. Um. Let me quickly get my password. Okay, I usually don't use password that I can remember, so I have to copy it from somewhere in case. So I don't use um, passwords that are words. Um, they are um, auto-generated passwords, so I really can't keep my password in mind. So now, I've looked, once you have hosting and then um, your domain name chip um, gives you an an account or a dashboard to manage your domain. So this is my domain. So I have 
one hosting here. Um, so this is my hosting package. I'm using the Stellar business. Uh, and this is my uh, um, access certificate I have installed on that on, the, on my domain. So um, I can now straight up, straight up look, um, go into the cPanel. Um, but first of all, if this is the first time you're buying a domain, you would have to, um, first of all, to your hosting. Um, if it's not connected to the hosting, so let me just do. I log into the cPanel. Okay. So um, you notice that we have something called name service. Um, so name servers are um, kind of like um, where they can they can't find they can find your web, website. So every hosting company provide um, servers. So those servers have addresses. So this is Namecheap's servers. But if you're you're not hosting with the same company, that means you might have to you might have a different name service, which are normally be um, a URL. Just like a domain, so it could be ns one dot um, .org or ns and ns two dot .org. So you'd have to connect the domain to your um, your hosting. It's connected to Namecheap hosting, so that means the domain is with the same person, the same person hosting the listen. If it's a different custom one, which is then you enter the name service that your hosting um, provider provided you. If Namecheap is not hosting your domain. Then after that, you can now come back and log into your dashboard, and then you want to set up your web your website. Just a just a quick comment here, Desiree. Okay. Um, for example, if you're looking for a good uh, domain name management platform, you can use the Cloudflare free services. Cloudflare also has a partnership with uh, TechSoup in terms of the offerings that they have. But Cloud Cloudflare is a very good. Um, not only DNS or domain name management platform, but it also offers quite a lot of security functionalities like free um, secure certificates for your website. So you can move it from a HTTP to an HTTPS connection. It offers a web application firewall. It offers a, a distributed denial of service protection service and all of these into their uh, free tiering. So it's a really good option to consider for, you know, for name services and DNS management. Okay, awesome. Okay, so now um, you can in and then log into your cPanel. Um, I already explained what a cPanel is. It's like an installation, um, an operating system installation on your um, your hosting. So it's like you bought a hosting, which is a computer, then you need an installation, an operating system. So the cPanel becomes like an operating system. So when I come here, you notice that I have several different apps installed. Already, um, I can go to create emails with a click of a button. Um, my, I can find when I can put in my website files. Um, I can create databases. Um, I can be able to. So we have um, software clause here. So these are software that I've installed. Um, so um, we have software clause app installer. So. With this application, as I mentioned earlier on, you can able to install a lot of content management systems of it, like Drupal, WordPress. My, um, so with a button, I can be able to log into software class installation. Um, you notice I have like 13 install. Um, so, um, so with a click of the button, if it's new, you would have. Um, zero installations in here. So you can go to, if you're using Joomla, you can also install Joomla. So with the click, by clicking this button, I'm able to install um, WordPress, like I mentioned in the presentation. So clicking this button installs WordPress on your server. No hassle, simple, just a single step. Okay, so um, I would have to go back to my cPanel. Okay, so, um, and there's this beautiful app in, so you, you notice that they, they also have um, WordPress. That, that, that means these apps have actually been installed. When you add more, they show up here. So um, 
I can now uh, open. Uh, okay, let me just open the same tab since I'm sharing the single tab. Okay, so um, this is um, the WordPress installation, which, so you notice I have several different WordPress installations already set up because um, my hosting allows me to set up unlimited number of websites on the same hosting. All right, so um, by clicking install, I can be able to install um, WordPress on my domain. Since I don't, I didn't buy a domain technically, I might have to use a subdomain. So let me show you how to create a subdomain on a particular domain. So um, just on a cPanel, you can create um, subdomain. So um, as I indicated earlier on, a subdomain is just technically uh, a domain on a particular domain. So maybe you have um, an organization and then you have maybe techsoup.org. Okay, let's just use um, the web that brought you to this event. We have event.techsoup.org. So event is another website altogether on the techsoup domain. So and we have a main, main we have blogs.techsoup.org. So you have several different it's like a sub office inside your office. Domain. I'm going to call it TechSoup Connect. Uh, then I'm going to um, put it under this particular domain, and then I create that. Okay. I think this is a bit slow. Okay, so um, the beautiful thing about um, Namecheap hosting is that once you install any new um, subdomain, it provides you a free one year XSL certificate on that particular domain. So you don't have to install XSL tickets for a whole year. So yeah. So it, it's enabling a free access certificate, meaning that this means that the domain has been created and it's in green. This is it's a one it's it's a one in showing that it's enabling the SSL. It's not fully complete. That is not in green. I can now go back and then be able to um, install web um, WordPress on that subdomain. So we are assuming that subdomain is a domain. Okay, so I click install. Um, so this is the software close up I spoke um, I spoke about. So I can now be able to search for. the tech soup domain I created, subdomain I created, um, I think. Okay, so this is tech soup connect. Then where do I want to install it? I want to install it in the main directory. So if you want to install it in a different directory, you can have, you'd have to add the directory. And what version of WordPress am I installing? 5.82, which is the current version of WordPress. Then I add my site description. So what's the name of my site or my Let's connect WordPress. Okay, so um, then your site description. So what's the description of your website? Um, a new website format. Okay. So then. I have, to, I have to enter my admin information. So the admin account allows you to um, be able to log into your website. So it gives you secure access to log into website and edit content. So um, one thing you need to know is that you don't have to you don't have to use the 
web admin because people already, already know that um, most websites use admin. So you have to change the name to something else and not admin. When comes to WordPress website and the person knows that, the person already knows that your, your, your username is admin. The only thing he needs to get is your password and then he's able to get into website. So use um, the same default admin username. So I can use maybe X um, tag, we can um, soup, and then, um, so the, I have a very creative way of creating usernames. Um, I can do this, and then I will, I can copy the connect and paste it this way. So this becomes very difficult for someone to um, guess even my username, talking of um, guessing my password. So um, I can maintain this default password and then I'll copy it to a secure location. My login. So you have to copy your login information to a secure location. So you need to ensure that your password is not easy to get, your username is not easy to get. Then you enter your admin email. Um, let me use this. Okay. And you go down, you can decide to choose a template. So this is a beautiful thing about using Software Clause. You can go to select a default template in here and then you are good to go. So you just find a template in here, then you, you install. But we might have to, we might, we'll choose to install the template once we get into the installation. So. So where do they know your installation information? So where should the installation details be sent to? Then once you are done with that, you can now click install. So in a few seconds, um, WordPress is installed on your domain with a default um, template. So it provides you two URLs. Um, we have the website URL where people can visit you. So you, now can, you can now share this with the public and they can go to access the website. And then the administrative URL for admin, that's where you're able to log into your admin account. Mm -hmm. Desiree, let me interrupt you for a moment because we're okay. still seeing the name chip browser window are you trying to share another tab oh, okay let me share okay let, i think let me share my whole brow, um, chrome browser instead to make it easier we may have to do uh in a future session we may have to do um uh, we may have to cover the topic of um installing wordpress themes and using child themes which are always a good idea and um you know, just how, how you install it, how you configure a diff, how you figure out how to configure a theme. That might be a really good topic. Um, we are running very short on time. Is there a whole lot more to your presentation, Desiree? Um, okay, um, I think in five minutes, I, should, I, I, could, I could be done. I don't mean to rush you, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could be done in five minutes. Okay, let me okay. finish. So once we are done setting up, so you have your website URL and your administrative URL. So when you click on this, um, it takes you to your website URL. Let me see. Okay, I think uh, I need to share um, my entire screen, but If I share my entire screen to be a disaster. Okay. So there you have it. This is your um, website now. So the next thing is you can now be able to um, edit um, your website, add content, add pages, install plugins. Um,
So I log in um, the admin dashboard. So this is my admin interface. So over here, I can be able to create posts, as I mentioned earlier on, and then pages from our website. So um, I can start, I'll start with the pages and then uh, come to the post. Then we do, we do with the plugin and we are good to go. So you see that automatically a privacy page is created for you. Uh, privacy policy page, so you can go to add a new page, like the home page, and you add a bit of content. Okay, so um, you don't have to know coding to do this. You just have to um, um, type in text. Um, this this is home page. You can now add your the content of your website. Then you publish it. Once you publish, you can preview it on your website, and then that's what the public sees. So you can now view it on your website. So now you now have content created on your website. Um, you can actually choose a very good template instead of what we have now. Um, or if you bought a premium template, you can install it on your website. Um, so then we'll go into setting up plugins. Desiree, if you want uh, to showcase uh, the way that the template uh, is installed, for example, you can go to the appearance themes and install, let's say, I don't know, the yeah, Astra I'm, theme. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually trying to rush it because of the time. Yeah, I know it's going to take two minutes. If you find the Astra <laughs> theme and install yeah. it, we showcase the way to install a new theme. Uh, why it's not? Yeah, add new. Astra is one of the most popular ones. Yeah, it's yeah, there. It's, you can just it was there. Astra. Because basically, if you follow this route, you can have a fully built website in a couple of minutes. You basically install a theme. Uh, after uh, you install this theme, uh, Astra has a companion plugin that it's called uh, Starter Sites. So activate this theme and then go to plugins and add new and uh, find the starter sites. Okay, so I think that actually deals with what we intend to do um, in, a, in a simple terms. So, you, you, you've now set up a, temp, um, a template or a cream, and then you add a plugin. So the same approach you used to set up the, the adding a plugin can use to add all the security plugins, which in this presentation. Um, so, um, so starter sites, yeah. Should find the Astra starter sites in the top plugins. Um, okay. Maybe put Astra into the name Astra Starter Sites. Yeah, Starter Templates is called. Scroll up because I think it was the first one. Just that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the first one. Yeah. Just that it has a different name. Because they changed. I see that they offer now for multiple yeah. things, not just for Astra. Okay. It has elements as well. That's great. Yes. I've yeah, actually so already seen before. Okay. So you activate it. And then, so basically, technically, that's how you install any other plugins, the security, your security plugins, and all that. So once you have yeah. that set up, it's just about customization of your website. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if so... you go to appearance starter sites, you will see all the ready-made templates that you have there, starter templates. And you can search for, I don't know, 
let's say Elementor page builder and charity to find the charity template. And you can install it in a couple of clicks and have a full, let's say charity oriented website. Okay, so. Uh... Yeah, just select an editor. It can also be the block editor or the, or Elementor page editor. Just search for charity. There are, I think, three, at least three templates. No charity because they don't use nonprofit as a or yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and wrap us up, guys. Um it's 16 after. I'm okay. sorry. Um we've really we've so much good stuff that we've covered and, and we could just keep going. I know there's so much more. Um so think about like if you want to do a future session, definitely let me know. Um so thank you to everybody who who stuck it out. And um, if, if we're going to be doing our next WordPress Connect section sometime in March. We don't have an exact date chosen yet. It will most likely be a Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the topic right now we have selected is converting your WordPress pages from the classic editor to the Gutenberg editor, which was released with WordPress 5.0. Um, and if you have an older site, that's really a lot of people are having trouble, um, a little bit afraid to convert to the Gutenberg editor because they don't know what they're in for. And um, <laughs> we're going to talk about that. So Daniel, Desiree, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with the group today. And we will be sending out an email to everyone with the recording. Um, and we'll see you in March. Have a happy holiday. Take care. Thank, Thank you. Everyone. Take care.